Hi everybody and welcome to a video where we're going to talk about calculating cell potential for a galvanic cell for a battery when it's operating under non-standard conditions. So you should remember the chart that we gave you in class um, that has all these standard cell potentials, that list of about 40 half reactions that you could combine to find the cell potential of an entire redox reaction. Now the numerical values, the voltages on that chart are assuming standard state conditions, namely that your gases are present at 1 atm, that you're at 25 degrees, and that your concentrations are 1 molar. Now of course we are rarely at specifically all three of those conditions, right? We have a car battery, right? Car batteries don't operate at 25 degrees Celsius. They operate at temperatures that are a lot hotter than that on most days. Um, or perhaps in the dead of winter at temperatures that are colder than that. So we have to be able to calculate the cell potential for real world conditions. And that's what uh, this video is going to be about. I'm essentially going to go through what is more or less a thermodynamic consideration, a thermodynamic derivation of sorts. So let's start with the equation we see at the top of this slide here, namely delta G equals delta G zero plus RT ln Q. This should look familiar to you, right? This is the way we can calculate free energy change under any condition. So long as we know the free energy change under standard state conditions, plus a correction factor that brings in the gas constant, temperature in Kelvin, of course, and the reaction quotient, the products over reactants raised to the power of their balancing coefficient um, at whatever state the reaction happens to be in. So we're going to use this as our basis to develop the non-standard cell potential. All right, so we're going to start with this, and we're going to do a couple of fairly straightforward substitutions. We have recently learned that delta G can also be equal to negative NF squiggly E, or delta G zero, if you're at standard state conditions, is equal to negative NF squiggly E zero. So I'm going to take these two relationships and plug them in to my Gibbs free energy equation. So I'm going to have negative NF squiggly E is equal to negative NF squiggly E zero plus RT ln Q. Now let's keep our eye on the ball. This right here, squiggly E without the superscript, this is what I'm really looking for. I'm trying to find the cell potential under any condition. And I'm going to use as my basis the cell potential under standard state conditions. So essentially what you're going to do is you're going to calculate a number using the reduction potential charts we gave you in class. That's going to be the basis. And then you're going to do some corrections to it. So following through here on my analysis, I'm going to take the equation I've just written and I'm going to divide both sides by negative nf. And when I do that, I get squiggly e, the non-standard cell potential equals squiggly e0 minus rt over nf times the natural log of q. So this is going to be an important equation. So important, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to box it. This equation has a name. It's called the Nernst equation. Just a rather unfortunate name, Nernst. It does have a rather nerdy sound to it, but it's uh, named after a fellow named Nernst. And so what we have here is the equation where we can find the cell potential under any condition so long as we know the cell potential under standard state conditions, and we can know that because we have our reduction potential charts, then I need to know the temperature, I need to know the moles of electrons that are being exchanged in that redox reaction, right? So you need a balanced redox reaction in the case of a full oxidation reduction reaction to find the value of N. And Faraday's constant, 96,485 um, <coughs> coulombs per mole of electrons, and the reaction quotient. Where is the reaction at the present time, right? The products over reactants at the present time. Now there's one other version of the Nernst equation I'm going to show you. If you go ahead and you assume 25 degrees for the temperature, 
and you plug in a value for um, the gas constant, 8.314, and you plug in 96,485 in for Faraday's constant, you can rewrite this equation to be squiggly E. Actually, sorry about that. I'm going to try to do that. Here we go, back in black here. Squiggly E equals E0 minus 0, 0.0, that's a point, 0.592 divided by the moles of electrons, and we change uh, logarithm bases here, LOG of Q. This is also the Nernst equation, but it only applies if you are at 25 degrees C. So I'm not going to box that one because I don't think it's as important as the first version here that we found of the Nernst equation. Um, because again, this is only applicable for 25 degrees. But textbooks often show this version, so I'm going to show it to you. But if there's one Nernst equation to know, it's definitely this guy here. So in the next video, I'm going to go through some short sample problems about how you can actually apply the Nernst equation. But the idea here is that we can now calculate cell potentials for various temperature conditions, various concentration conditions, and uh, starting with standard cell potential as our basis. Very similar to the way you calculate free energy changes. Right? You calculate the free energy change under any condition, starting with the standard free energy change, and then you fix it. Right? Cell potential calculations really, at the end of the day, are free energy calculations. Okay, so the next videos, which will probably be a bit optional for you, I'm going to go through some sample calculations.